Guys, just a quick preface before you watch this video, let you know what you're about to see. This is the infamous Producer Michael reaction video I made about two years ago. I made it with his permission, but he didn't like it. And he had it struck down off YouTube with a copyright strike. Very aggressive move indeed. I still, to this day, don't know exactly what I said. To trigger him, you can take a look and see if you can figure out what it might be. Uh, I was quite critical of his collection, for sure. I warned them ahead of time I wasn't necessarily going to be blowing smoke up his ass the whole time. However, I feel like I was quite complimentary throughout, throughout most of the video. You can be the judge of that. Uh, I'll just let you know that there's a few things to keep in mind. One is you're seeing the real thing. I haven't made any new edits. I haven't cut anything out, any snide remarks or anything like that. Just in case you think I'm trying to cover over anything. I would have loved to make new edits because the <laughs> I'm much better at YouTube nowadays and editing than I was back then, clearly just watching it back. But anyway, I figured I uh, better give you guys the absolute real thing. So you are seeing 100% the original video. Two is the prices have changed a lot since then. So a lot of the prices you hear me mention, you'll be thinking, hold on, that's, you know, it's way more expensive now. That's because it was back in 2020 when I made this video, May of 2020. So the prices have totally changed since then. Uh, three is, that was during heavy, heavy lockdown in Italy. So I looked like an absolute mess. I was probably in my pajamas for like six weeks running, leading up to making that video, you know, just stuck in the apartment, you know, eating and drinking and watching Netflix like we all did. So I looked pretty groggy. I look like I just got out of bed. I probably did just get out of bed. My voice doesn't sound great either, but uh, that explains why, so apologies for that. Anyway, go check out the video and let me know if you think that uh, the reaction was merited. One small thing to keep in mind as well, it's just an extra detail, but it should be mentioned. A few months after this whole thing happened between me and him, a guy called Nico Leonard broke onto the scene. And he made a reaction video to produ producer Michael's watches exactly the same video. If you ask me, his was a lot more harsh than mine was. However, he did not receive the same rough treatment that I did. I have no idea why. Not that I would wish it on anyone else. I was just confused why it happened to one guy and not to the other. Who knows? Your guess is as good as mine, guys. But anyway, for now, check out the video. You might want to... Uh, Make sure you watch it all because it might get struck again. You never know. He might get angry again and take it down. You might be might be able to see the whole thing. So watch it while you can and let me know in the comments if you think I deserved it. All right, take it easy, guys. So tons of requests to take a look at the watch collections of other popular watch YouTubers. All right, guys, be careful what you wish for. Here we go. Attack. <sighs> what um, has he done? This particular one is stainless steel. What has he done? And these diamonds are uh, aftermarket diamonds. Oh, dear God. Been, it looks like it's made entirely from diamonds. Yes, so you can see any of the stainless on that. That's the, the goal. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is it. to the Timeless Watch channel. Guys, before I do anything, what am I wearing? I'm wearing the Daytona. Still been rocking her a lot lately. And no better day for it, actually, because it looks like I'm going to be looking at some crazy ass watches right here. I have my laptop in front of me. I'm going to take a look at producer Michael and his collection. Part one, mind you. The guy has it would seem he has hundreds of watches. Uh, so if you're familiar with his channel, uh, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. If you're not, you should go check him out. The guy is very, a very sweet guy who's uh, clearly 
made his millions and is enjoying uh, all his money now later in life it would seem so he uh, he also likes watches uh, you know apart from jet airplanes and fancy cars he does have an extensive watch collection and I have to say some very eccentric kind of uh, taste not my kind of thing now I will warn you I know reaction videos are usually very complimentary in most cases I'm gonna warn you that I don't know how this is gonna go because I don't share uh, producer Michael's taste I like his humor I like his style he seems like a nice fella but uh, <laughs> I've yet to see a watch that he owns that I would even wear or go near um, and I'm gonna tell you what I think so I don't know if this is gonna infuriate any producer Michael fans out there uh, <laughs> but uh, don't feel too bad for the guy. He's uh, he's doing pretty well for himself. I think he can take a little bit of criticism if that's what happens. So let's have a look, shall we? LA. Hi guys. We're here at uh, Chase Bank. I just came to pick up some watches and I'm doing this for you because there's been so many requests to see watch collection. Uh, it's a tough thing, thing for me to do because I have to keep them in the bank. My insurance insists on it. So uh, we're going to do it bit by bit. There's a bunch in here. Let's get a look at them and we'll do episodes two, three, four, and five sometime in the future. Let's go. It's a good idea to keep your watches in the bank. So here we are. Especially this guy's watches. Goodies for you to have a look at. Um, it's not all of them, but uh, it's certainly a nice selection. In fact, I don't quite know what's in the box. Let's find out. Are we ready? <laughs> he doesn't even know what's in his first box. I guess when you have hundreds of watches, that's going to happen. Ah, some goodies. Yes. So where should we I mean, straight off, that is already, I mean... Right out of the gate, guys, this is, this is not my kind of thing. Look at what I see here is tra tragedy. Like if we go up to the very end, I'm seeing some, I look like 5711s there, Patek Philippe, but they're absolutely covered in diamonds. Why would you do that? Let's keep this one till last because this is one of my favorite ones. <laughs> okay. So this one's going to, we'll come back to this one. Well, strangely well. enough, that's the most expensive watch in the box and it looks, to the layman, probably looks the cheapest. So yeah. what, why did I even ask you? Let's, let's start with this okay. one. Okay, right. so this one here. That is an, off, this that's is, an offshore, right? Off. This is that's a AP, Audemars Piguet, offshore. Yeah. And this particular model is called a Navy. The, Navy, the reason right. it's called the Navy is because the, I don't know if you can actually see, it might show up black on the video, but the subdials and the hour markers are blue. All blue. Navy Everything's blue. blue. And the, the pushes buttons are blue. themselves are also Navy blue. Yeah. So uh, this is a pretty fun watch. Really enjoy this watch. So It's uh, beautiful. I mean, that's, if you're into AP, if you're into a big chunky offshore, the thing about the AP offshores is they have that industrial look. They look like something off of a submarine parts or something like that. They look put together. They're not elegant looking watches. They're like, they look like um, one of the baby industrial ones in the locks here. So before I forget, because I might as well. Yeah, I was going to ask. My wrist as well. That Otherwise looks like a president. Forget about it. it is a president. So this is the Rolex Day Date Presidential. Yeah. And this particular one is the 41 millimeter model. It's the biggest one they make. Oh, wow. Uh, that is a chunk of watch. One thing I don't like is the dial you went for there and the, uh, those, do you see the way the, uh, the Arabic numerals, I'm losing my lexicon here. They kind of, they go upside down. So as if you're supposed to read the watch kind of like, <laughs> like that or something, you know, it's Rolex being, strange and funky um, they actually but look at the bracelet there if any of you guys know my speedmaster um my 861 my old speedmaster it has that 1450 bracelet they're beautiful looking bracelets that looks quite like it only it's solid gold obviously last year and replaced it with a 40 millimeter one which i don't quite understand why they did it um, this has become very sought after now because it's rare. They don't make it anymore and everybody wants it. And the golden rule whenever they discontinue uh, anything. Watch, uh, great everyday watch. 
that has some weight to it. A um, great everyday watch is a solid gold presidential, a $50,000 watch, $40,000 watch. Very, very pretty. Yeah, actually the, the real presidential, the president's classic one is a 36 millimeter watch, but they did make a 41 and they went back down to 40, strangely. They, they, they made some odd choices a few years back. They also did a date just that was the date just two and now they have the date just 41 and the date just two is different size to the 41 I'm, I, I can't remember if the lugs are larger or bigger or smaller I can't remember what it is but there's a they changed their mind they double back uh, with a couple of models and this is one of those so they started at 41 they went you know what's too much and then they they brought it back a little closer to the original presidential so they went back to 40 mils let's move on so now let's go into another Rolex. Lovely. This particular one is a Rolex Daytona. It's 40 millimeter case made of 18 karat yellow gold and it has a factory diamond dial. And the hours that the stopwatch has been running and the one on the left here is a continual stopwatch. Ring, ring. My phone is ringing and I hope the housekeeper picks it up because I'm not going to. I love that they just kept filming. Um, and they left it all in. <laughs> so this is a, a great watch. It's a very, very popular watch. Funny. Rolex had great success with the Daytona. I really enjoy wearing it. Um, it's low key, but it's still a Rolex. It's a gold Rolex. And uh, I, I think it's a very lovely watch. Well, isn't it? Compared to a lot of your others, that's a, I would say probably one of the most traditional looking watches you have. Yeah, I don't often wear You're right, it. Adam. But, uh, I do think Adam Swords is the guy on the, you want to on be the camera. Key, uh, but still wearing They're a little team, these guys. Piece. So this is the perfect watch for that. So let's put that watch. So this is a very interesting watch. What on earth is this? Most of you will probably have never seen before. What on earth is this? This is a Romain Jerome. Oh, right. And it's made with parts of the Titanic. <laughs> uh, these watches are all automatic, at least everything that I've showed you. So Does it matter that it's ugly as hell? Does that? And I'm just winding this up now. Does that play the a propeller, part? In trying to keep it still so you can see it, is actually the second hand, and you should see that. <sighs> I mean, I still can't read the time on it. I think it says seven minutes to 11, but I'm not sure. And some of the parts inside the watch are polished pieces of the Titanic when they brought it up. Uh, on the back, there's a full- They never brought the Titanic up. He means the pieces. This is a watch I bought about, um, just, just so you guys know, the Titanic is extremely, extremely deep. You, normal divers can't go. I know a little bit about diving. Don't ask me how. I read a book once. And uh, yeah, it's not the kind of ship. Certain ships you can dive down. Regular, you know, divers can go down, check it out, have a look, take a few photos. They're, they always look for treasure. They always look for knives or old bottles of bourbon or something that they can find or whatever. But uh, uh, the Titanic, I believe, is at something like 2,500 feet, which is just, you can't, you can't dive. You have to go down in a special thing. You have to be James Cameron. There you go. Probably fine. Very well-known brand, but I saw this and I heard the story about it uh, and, and I couldn't resist, so I just went ahead and, and bought it. I actually bought two. Um, the other one is... Of course it is. Here. The other one is made with... The other one just dust. for a backup. Uh, and I know it sounds ridiculous. What did you say? Google it. Uh, Remain Jerome Titanic and Moon Dust. I have both of them. Oh, Moon uh, Dust. Very fun watches. And they pride themselves on making watches using components from volcanoes that erupt, from the moon, from the Titanic. and. Okay, listen. Great. All well and good in theory. But could they make a pretty watch? <laughs> Could you start there and then put the parts in? I don't know. Like, in theory, that's a really interesting idea. Wow, I've got the only one in the world with Titanic parts or whatever. It's probably limited edition, whatever. Um, make it pretty. Make it nice looking. Watch that thing is grotesque. Okay, next, let's go to this. And before we start, let me give it a little bit. They're all automatic. What is this? We'll just get them going so that... I don't know what this is. Now, this is a very interesting Oh, it's Breguet, my God. This is Ooh. an 18-carat rose gold Breguet. <laughs> and this is what Look they call the Royal Marine Alarm. So there's a hand at 12 o'clock 
that uh, activates the alarm. Would you like me to show you how it works? Yeah. Okay, so this here, this second one, you unscrew it like everything else. So some watches have alarms in them. They actually ding, ding, ding. They have a little motor system inside. It uses a lot of extra power from your power reserve. So some watches use the regular power reserve in the back from the spring barrel. And some have a whole separate spring barrel just for that function when they, you know, like Jacob and Co make one that plays piano and things like that. They're just extra. If you're going to use those features, you, you have to expect to wind the watch more often because it's going to use extra power. This is Breguet, historic, amazing. I mean, this is high horology right here. Uh, Breguet, of course, invented the tourbillon and uh, was one of the great original inventors of watch parts. I'll give this one a pass, even though I find the case to be a little gross. Breguet are usually a lot more elegant and more traditional, you know, timepiece designs from another era. You can tell from the dial, the dial has a lot of class to it. Those Roman numerals is beautiful. And look at those hands, they're absolutely magnificent. They look like something from a clock off an old tower. Out, and you see this hand? Mm. Okay, you set that to the time you want the alarm to go off. And I'm gonna turn it round so that the alarm, in fact- it Looks like a GMT off. hand almost. Should be coming up about now. And of course I did it wrong, like I do everything wrong. You have to switch it on. Yeah, I switched it on. Let's try that again. <laughs> and pull this out. What am I doing? I don't deserve these things, do I? <laughs> okay. See, that's why I like Jeez. producer Michael. <laughs> Even though his taste is, I, I'm, I don't align with his taste in any way, shape or form normally, including his flowery shirts and weird shoes and stuff he's just he, he has a certain modesty to him that just makes you kind of give him a pass with all this crazy opulence yeah uh, probably you know, right here right. we go right there we go yeah. so that listen to that vibrates and makes a noise on your wrist so you can set it and then this over here stops it from wow. from running look at the size of that watch this though it's a monster blue and white slider is what is the power reserve for the alarm. So I'm now winding that uh, because it takes, I won't do it because- You see, it has a separate power reserve for just the alarm and it even has, looks like a little meter. Shake the watch on, on the camera, but that's what winds it so that you have the power to activate the alarm and it doesn't take away from the actual watch it's a, mechanism. That's a so. big bulky Breguet. I, I'm not familiar with this Breguet's- This is carat rose gold uh, and it has a rubber strap. The back of it is extraordinary. Um, just absolutely oh my beautiful. Dear God, look at that. This is called Guilloche. I probably pronounced that wrong, and I'm sure lots of people will tell me I did. But uh, it's a procedure, it's all done by hand. Uh, just a very, yeah. very beautiful watch. That is, uh, that's something to behold. Look at that rotor, it's magnificent. Oh my God. The workmanship. So one guy might spend a year making one watch. I mean, he works on the movement. There's thousands of parts. Well, I don't know how many parts, so mm -hmm. a lot of parts in there. Each one is handmade. Hundreds each of one parts, is hand polished yeah. and yeah, they're assembled. Still so that's what you're paying for and you know, the design. I've actually been over to Switzerland various times, many times, to the factories. Um, I've ordered watches and watched have. them being made. And it's fascinating. And I, I don't know how these people do it because the amount of patience you need when you've got a little tiny piece and you're wearing a microscope glass and you're filing it with a literally a piece of wood for weeks until it's absolutely perfect. And they do that with every component that goes in there and they assemble it. I don't know how they do it. So respect, truly. Okay, moving on. So that's cool about him. He, he has an appreciation for horology. He's not just try, trying to get the latest greatest thing, the fad, the latest fad that everybody else wants. He's, he has a passion for horology, which is nice. It's a little odd and quirky, but you know, he at least knows a fair amount of what, what he's talking about. He's not a complete dummy with these things and just buying the most expensive thing you can find, you know, like some people do. This is, I love this watch. I really love this watch. Um, Audemars Piguet. This is an Audemars Piguet, and again, I haven't worn it in a while, so let's let's get this going. This watch is one that I've been trying, or was trying to buy for, gosh, probably a year, year and a half, and very hard to come by. 
uh, and uh, somebody located one for me and was like, yeah, I've got to have it. So uh, one of my pride and joys. So may that be a lesson to you all. Like, even when you've got this kind of guy's money, you still wind up on waiting lists. You still wind up searching for certain watches. You can't just wave your, your money wand and say, I want the watch here, right here, right now. You still have to kind of bow to the, to the supply issues with certain watches. It's just the way, the way of it. This is a Richard Meal RM1103. This is a very popular um, and model. And this is one of the hardest watches yeah. to come by. It's really uh, rare Meal because it was one of the kind of most watches, famous. Highly, highly complicated watches and uh, they don't allow many of them out in the marketplace. So this particular Disgusting. watch is worth substantially more than the retail Grotesque. price, which is already ridiculous, but people are paying. I'm not a fan of Richard Mille. It's just, for them because you just can't get them. You know, somebody was saying recently, it was a David Khalil was saying, if this, if the mechanics inside that watch, the Richard Mille, which are no doubt, they're really impressive, of course. If they were in a smaller case, it would be more impressive. When you make cases that large, you could put anything in it. You could probably put a TV remote control in it at a certain point. You can, you know, you could put anything in there because it's it's so large, so it's not as impressive engineering. It's different when you get a Calatrava or you know, a Patek or something like that, or a Lange, that you have all this incredible workmanship inside this beautiful elegant case there is nothing elegant about that design whatsoever Let's take a look at this what this is it's a chronograph can't get my head around um, which is the same as i showed you earlier on <coughs> uh, i believe it was the, the rolex daytona i showed you on um, hours minutes and continual seconds the top has the second function which i just pressed now i find myself looking for the numbers the numerals on the dial I know skeleton dials usually have that issue, but this one's particularly bad offender. I've just noticed that 11 is actually in the top left corner. I've only noticed it now. And one is actually here. Before that, I couldn't see it. <laughs> There's a certain point where design gets a little, little far. You can see the... And pushes power. its way into function, you know. Well, the, the, Don't get the me counter, started. The minute counter revolving again, I stop it. And then if I press this, it will reset it back to zero together with all the other dials. In the center, you have the date, which is probably wrong because I haven't worn it in a while. And in this bottom corner, I don't know if you can see it with the camera, but there's actually the month. This is the new case. Can't see anything, little, uh, Michael. Cutouts. At first, when I saw it, I saw a picture of it and I thought, well, that's a bit strange. But uh, it's grown on me and I absolutely love it. Um, turning to the back, the back of this watch, uh, again, highly, highly complicated. Um, they use components which are very, very different to other watch manufacturers. That's true. They, they go out of their way to use bolts and stuff that aren't used. When a watch mender wants to open a, a Richard Mille, they have terrible difficulty because none of their regular tools work with the Richard Mille stuff. It's all customized parts. But to say that the actual structure inside the Richard Mille is more complex than other famous watches is a stretch. It's, it's using all the same principles. Uh, mechanical watches all use the same principles. The only, there are certain watches that use different principles like uh, the Belova the Aquatron, which uses electromagnetic for, force and a, a a tuning fork on the inside and runs at 360 beats per second and stuff like that. It's a totally different uh, way of measuring time. These things all measure time the same way. But he's kind of half right that the parts that are, that are being used inside it are specific to Richard Meal, Richard Meal, I should say, uh, specific to him and uh, to his brand. Um, there's race car. Uh, technology, which is carbon fiber, uh, titanium, and some other metals that they don't talk about. They won't say what they actually are. Yes, but those parts could be made also of stainless steel. It's not, they just make them out of carbon fiber. And An incredible, incredible piece. And this is probably my favorite of all the watches I own. Not necessarily the <laughs> most expensive, but it is definitely my favorite. Love this watch. See, right there. 
you lost me. Like the watch on your wrist is a thousand times more beautiful, even though it is a solid gold and it's a little bit, I don't know, pimpy or something like that. That thing with the yellow strap, I mean, and such a hideous shade of yellow as well. Just, I mean, come off it. Has the plastic on it from when it was new because I'm a great believer in keep that on as long as you can. Oh, <laughs> I know. I love <laughs> that's tacky, that's tacky. It's like you ever go into those houses like in Queens, you get those families, you get the new furniture and it has the plastic protector on it and they never take the plastic off and the lampshade has still has plastic on it because they never want to tarnish the new furniture. They don't want it to get stained but they live with plastic, like plastic covered furniture. So they're not really enjoying the, the furniture anyway. So it's like, what are you doing? It's got that little really? Oh, so if you look at a lot of these, they have the plastic on the back. <laughs> okay. You know, he's really keeping the plastic on because he, this is a businessman and he knows that if he has the plastic on, in the moment that you peel the plastic off, you've reduced the, the possible resale value, so. Don't pretend it's not for that, Michael. Yeah, I don't have it on the front. I took yeah, that off. absolutely. Okay, so this is a fully blinged out <sighs> tech. <sighs> what um, has he done? This particular one is stainless steel. What has he done? And these diamonds are uh, aftermarket diamonds. Oh, dear God. Been... It looks like it's made entirely from diamonds. You yes, it is. You can see any of the stainless on there. That's the, the goal. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is a... a stainless steel and it's, it's got the, the diamonds on it and this is the, the back of it. These are a, a great watch, although not my favorite. I rarely wear Patek. Um, it's very, very thin, as you can see, and I like chunky watches. And this just, as nice as it is, it doesn't. Listen, I know everybody's got different tastes and it would be a very boring world if we all had the same taste, but how can you? It's very thin and I like chunky. It's like the whole magic of that watch is the fact that they've put all this beautiful engineering, as he said, painstakingly, you know, ground down parts, handmade parts and so on, into this beautiful, elegant, thin piece. And of course, thin is about how, wearing it under your cuff, you know, wearing a nice suit and a nice shirt and it's, it's slim and it's under the cuff and it's elegant, it's understated. That's the whole point. Otherwise, we'll wear a big, thing around like a flavor flav thing. <laughs> big clock you know what on earth but the worst part here is the dot like diamonds do it for me but i think as a watch collector it would be wrong if i didn't. you know under all those diamonds is a really beautiful watch i i have it i'm gonna leave this out for a second so you can see the difference between this one and this one, which is basically Here we go again. exactly the same. Oh my God. Except this one is made of gold. So if you feel the difference in the weight of both of these watches, they're identical watches. This one is gold with diamonds. This one that's is rose steel. gold and it's same watch. That's a $300,000 watch <laughs> covered in. I mean, I know they're diamonds and I know they're worth a lot of money, but why would you? It's like meeting a beautiful woman and going, hang on a minute, and just like gluing her face and sticking diamonds to her face or something. Like, that's not nice. This one, Adam, feel the weight of it. Okay, yeah. Okay, and then feel this one. I'm getting like, I need a drink watching this. this is, I need to calm down. Yeah, just at like, least, what yeah. The at least, yeah. So, uh, again, the reason I, I have two of these is because uh, sometimes, you know, you need the gold color and sometimes you need the silver color. Well, I guess nobody needs any of this. But, if you're in the position, uh, then why not? It, yeah, I, I'm in the very fortunate position where I'm able to, so I, I figured, why not? Um, I guess. But yeah, they're, they're beautiful watches. They keep great time. Uh, I don't really know much about the mechanisms because Patek is not, you know, my favorite, but they are, they are very nice. This one, before I tell you much about it, I'm going to give everybody a shock with Adam. Patek is not his favorite. However, he felt the need to get a gold one and a steel one and plaster them full of diamonds. There's just so much that's, there's so many alarm bells that are just going off in my head here. The weight of this. This is an AP in gold. <laughs> wow, that's heavy. That weighs over a pound. 
Oof. That, I mean, that is probably as heavy as three of the Pateks put together, three of the gold Pateks yeah, put together. Yeah, or more, or more. Wow. So yeah. why is that so heavy? So it's, it's all gold. Um, this, is, this is all gold and it's also all diamonds. So this is an Audemars offshore. Um, <laughs> as you can see, every piece of it is, is diamond and um, the, the actual bracelet itself is very thick and it's all it's solid gold solid back and uh, absolute monster consequently weighs a ton when you wear this watch at the end of the day you know you've been wearing it yeah because your so arm is sore heavy. look there's a thing about heavier watches sometimes it's nice to have a good chunk like when i wear i have a two-tone sub right i have the sea dweller but let's take the sub for example versus the steel sub after wearing the two-tone sub, you put the steel one on and it feels incredibly light, even though there's only 20 grams of difference. There's something about having kind of like the weight, the importance of a heavy watch on your wrist, especially if you're a big guy like me, you want kind of a watch to be bleh. But really my issue with this is just like, look again, we go, here we go with the diamonds again. I mean, what's, I don't know. <laughs> It's just, I don't know what it, who would wear that, I don't know. So again, in contrast, I did the same thing. This is the same watch. He did the same thing again. In white, this one is steel. And if you want to feel the weight of this one, Adam, you'll see there's a significant oh, wow, yeah. difference. Yeah. I mean, Try this one again. Mother of God. That is incredible. It's that ridiculous, is. right? It's yeah. absolutely ridiculous. But these are two beautiful watches. They're both chronographs. Um, they were two diamonds, beautiful watches. And, uh, uh, very much the same. Yeah. Oh, boy. Fun, right? Do they do that? Fun, anymore? I guess it is fun. They don't. Okay. There's another Rolex. This is actually the same as what I'm wearing. Okay, another um, president. But this one is blinged out for those yeah. fun things. a factory blinged out or? A little bit more bling. Uh, and bling it is. So this is a. 41 millimeter presidential. It has the diamond dial with the hour markers. Uh, they're round and there's two baguettes on the nine and the six. That looks like it came from Rolex as well. It's just something when you see an original, uh, you know, even one with far too many stones on it, like that watch, you, um, it, if it's been done by a third party, as in, you know, they took a perfect watch, a gold watch, like the one that's on his wrist, and then started attaching um, stones, some jeweler added uh, stones, no matter how good they are, it's always, there's something, you look at it and there's something that looks a little bit aftermarket. Uh, whereas when you, like that one, just looking at that one right there, just, just the kind of perfection of how everything is aligned. I would be surprised if that's not, like if that didn't come straight from Rolex themselves. Um, and if anybody watching this is wondering, this is a uh, limited edition one-on-one -on -one <laughs> G-Shop. Uh, it's made of plastic in its entirety you know, honestly, uh, and cost me about $60. And probably keeps better time than any of mine. <laughs> yeah. And then it's not really about that, right? Spots. It's not about keeping time, this really. This is one of my favorites as well. It is uh, to a certain degree, but no. This is a Rolex GMT2. It is made of white gold uh, and diamonds. The bezel is baguettes with black onyx hour markers. Uh, this actually turns in both directions. Um, they say you can go diving in it, and you, I'm sure you can, but I don't know if this is a wise thing to do yeah, with a watch I'm of this value, sure you know. To dive on. And also, how heavy is that one? All white gold, that's yeah. very heavy. It's a white it's gold TNT, so, so if you went diving really you would, um, beautiful piece. To get rid of a couple of weights off your There you go, right? That would, that would keep you going down. Please hit that subscribe button. Hit the All bell. right, dude. Uh, I think I need a drink now after that. I mean, look, it's... The great one of the great things about being into watches is that we're all into slightly different stuff. Putting diamonds on a watch was normally for women's watches, right? Diamonds on the dial and so on. It's kind of leaning more to the jewelry aspect of what the watch is. 
okay if you're gonna put some diamonds on it do it tastefully put some accents in you know when you just get something that's plastered with diamonds it almost just seems like someone with no actual decent touch it's like walking it's like ordering a plate of food and they just put everything on the they just slop everything onto the plate absolutely every flavor sweet savory everything understand the simplicity the beauty some of those pieces are just they define simplicity and beauty and they've been raped with with diamonds they've just been raped this all the the class and the finesse and the the beautiful tones have just gone out gone out the window just gone out the window i just <laughs> You know, I have a strong opinion about this, and that's fine. I'm sure if I'm sure if I showed uh, Michael Blakey uh, just a simple, simple, like even like a Patek Calatrava, I'm sure he's seen many of them. He probably isn't into it because it probably just doesn't. It's probably not electric enough. You see, that's what this chase for ice as they call it when they ice up a watch like that covered with precious stones it's to kind of electrify the look but if you're not electrified by it already then you're missing something you know that to me computes as like walking in and there's a walking into a party and there's a, a, a string quartet in the corner and, and saying oh you know take their clothes off or paint them spray them with paint and you know electrify and put drums in it's like <laughs> you're trying to like you know i don't know if i'm explaining myself very well i once saw somebody take a beautiful bottle of wine and pour coke coca-cola into it it was a thousand dollars it was a four thousand dollar bottle of wine and he poured it in with coke so it would have bubbles am i making my point anyway to each their own good for you man that you can afford to just get like a rose gold and the stainless steel or was it white gold i can't remember the stainless steel version of a patek 5711 i believe or is that the 3801 the older one the smaller one anyway just get both colors even though you're not even crazy about the the brand this is like half a million bucks of watches right there okay guys that's uh that's that one there's a lot more producer michael to get through and i don't know if i have enough alcohol in the house to get through it <sighs> maybe i'll go on to a different uh watch collection for the next one i hope you enjoyed that guys thanks for tuning in to the uh timeless watch channel take it easy i'll see you in the next one